Hello, this video is for my St. Paul school students um, and anybody else who's using my wireless um, uploading um, software. Uh, this software was written uh, by a former student of mine, Cairo Morton, um, and then I modified it heavily. Um, but uh, the idea came from, uh, from Cairo, so I want to give him full credit. The idea is you can this is a Teensy microcontroller on a Patent Robotics PRT32 motherboard. Um, and this, this cable here, this green cable, is connected to my computer so I can upload code directly from it. The idea um, with this, with Cairo's um, uh, concept, is we can take a Raspberry Pi, in this case it's a Raspberry Pi 0W, um, which is really just a computer. It doesn't have a monitor or keyboard attached to it. I, I, I don't need that. It's got a battery pack that's powering the Pi, although that's also not necessary. And then the Pi is connected to another Teensy, right? And so, so this Teensy is going to be controlled by this, by this computer, by this Raspberry Pi. Now, this is this is a W, a Pi Zero, a W, which stands for wireless. And so, this guy is not connected to, um, physically connected to my computer at all. It's a wireless, it's a wireless device. So I'm going to move that away for a second. And here so you can see kind of what's happening. All right, let me focus. All right, so here is the here's the throughput. Here's how to here's how to make it here's how to make it happen. Uh, the first thing to do is to go to Dropbox.com and log in to um, the school's uh, Dropbox account. I'm not going to show that. I'm not going to show the password. My students have it on Canvas. Um, they have the username and password. So you log in and you'll see um, the Dropbox has a robots folder, robots folder. Um, it's important that it's very important you don't delete uh, any folders uh, in Dropbox. Otherwise, um, the API, the little uh, backdoor handling of uh, the, well, just don't delete any, any folders inside of Dropbox. Okay. I don't care what it is. If you make a mistake, just leave it. So the inside the robots folder, uh, this is uh, the St. Paul School uh, Dropbox account. So currently we have three uh, Teensies set up, SPS 1, 2, and 3. And it turns out that if you, um, if you look really carefully here, I've labeled this one as 3. So this is the third robot. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the third robot, and you can see that it's empty. Okay, there's there's nothing here. It's waiting for us to put something there so it can upload to the to um, to the Teensy. All right, over here we have a really simple piece of code. It will light up the onboard LED, which is connected to pin 13. It puts the LED in output mode, turns on the LED, waits for a second, turns off the LED, waits for a second, and then this loop function repeats, you know, uh, runs repeatedly, so it will um, just continue to uh, to blink. All right, and so this is the command, or this is the, the sketch file name here. What Dropbox is looking for is a hex file, actually machine code. And so it, we could upload this, for example, if I uploaded this code. Okay, it, you can see here it's updating to the, to the current time here. And all of a sudden you can see it uploads and the onboard LED blinks here. We can make it go faster if we want to. Upload that code just to show that this is connected directly to my computer. And in a second, it will upload and blink really fast. Okay, I don't know if that shows up on the on uh, YouTube here because of the refresh rate of the camera, but let's just upload it again and make it go more slowly. So one second on, one second off. Okay, so how do we get it to run? How do we get this code, which is connected to my computer, how do we get it to run on this guy? Okay, again, this is not connected to my computer, but it is connected to my, to my uh, home office uh, Wi-Fi. All right, let me focus there. Again, battery pack here, uh, Raspberry Pi, and the Raspberry Pi is connected to the, to the thing. All right. So here's how they do it. You go to, instead of uploading the code, you go to sketch and you go to export compiled binary, all right, or control alt s or command alt s on a Mac. Okay, so let's look what happens whenever we do that. We're going to compile it, 
look over here and you'll see that it shows up with the file name, the name of the microcontroller, and .hex. This is the machine code that is going to be run, that's going to be used by the Tinsi. Or this is code here that humans can read and, and you know, um, uh, are going to see, and this is machine code. So all you have to do is grab that hex file and drag it into the robot folder on Dropbox. Okay. Um, actually, let me let me zoom in here so and kind of see what's going to happen more readily. And you'll notice that there's there's no light blinking. And again, this is not connected to my computer at all. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to drag it in. It uploads it here in Dropbox. You're going to see some blinks here. Happen, and after it, it uh, the code on the Raspberry Pi pings the Dropbox every five seconds. Okay, so you can see up here that the that the code is being run on the Teensy. Okay, it's uploaded manually. I'm a little confused why it is not. Um, uh, this should this should be deleted. I think it's because I just uh, Dropbox hasn't refreshed. Let me just refresh the screen here, and it should be gone. And of course it's not. It never works when you record, does it? Okay, let me try that again. Why it's there it is. I don't know. Um it should it should read the hex file, load the hex file, and then delete the hex file. Okay. So there it is, it's blinking one second on, one second off. And now, now that you've established the routine, we can, maybe let's get it to, to, to flash, one quick flash and then off for a while. Okay, so we go to sketch, compile that guy. It's gonna rewrite that. Notice this is at 7.53 now, the new time is 7.53, so that's the new hex file. I simply grab it, drag it into the Dropbox, um, the Raspberry Pi will ping this once every five seconds. Okay. There it is. And so um, it was actually, it grabbed it and deleted it so quickly we couldn't see it. But now you see that that new code, that, that quick flash and that long delay is, um, is now loaded. Okay. So the code, the code we've changed here can be uploaded quickly. So, um, that is uh, basics. That's the basics of it. Now, there are other options here. You can actually grab data from the sensors and you can print data to the sensors. I'll show that on a different video. But let me show you something that, that is kind of useful. So let's say you want to blink. Um, let's, let's call this, you know, um, short, long blink. OK, so what we can do is we can come over here and change the name of this hex file in our in our um, OS file system. And let's just call it um, blink. Um, maybe uh, short, long, or something like that. So short blink, long delay. Okay. And then let's make it be a long blink and a short delay, something like that. So we can go to sketch, up, uh, compile binary. All right. And this way I, I can build kind of a library of machine code Blink long short. Okay, and let's put it back to regular, you know, blink regular. And compile binary. I'm just gonna call this blink regular. Okay, so now if I want to make the, you know, I've got all this code pre-written, I could just simply drag this piece of code in, which makes the, the the LED on the on the board blink regular. So every second on, every second off. If I want to do long short, I just simply grab it and drag it, and it's long on, short off. Okay. And if I want to do short long, I simply take it and grab it. Okay. So there it is. Setting up this code was was a labor of love. Or setting up the Raspberry Pi, I'll tell you, was a was a long long term project. Um, again, uh, the idea, the, the the nucleus of it came from 
from my former student, Cairo Morton. And I think that um, it's just, it's brilliant. I love how, um, uh, it's, I love how easy it is to use. So Cairo's idea was to use the, was to use the Raspberry Pi to control the, um, to control the microcontroller using Dropbox. And he had written a piece of software that allowed you to do it without, you know, dragging and dropping, just using um, an ID, uh, using a GUI that he created. And I thought it was, um, what I did is I integrated um, the simple Dropbox command. So you can just simply drag and drop into, into Dropbox. Um, and I, I, I streamlined some things and, and made some things um, uh, happen. Again, I'll show that in a different video where you can collect data wirelessly and submit data. Um, Back to Dropbox, so the so the you could put this on a robot, uh, have it wirelessly drive around um, uh, an environment, record data, give you that data back again. So it's kind of like a Martian rover in that regard. Okay, so there it is. I um, hope that you found this interesting. The setup of the Raspberry Pi and, and the code is is quite long. The my my manual for it is like twenty seven pages, but it takes you from find the Raspberry Pi to installing the software on the Pi um, to how, you know, how to, how to get the, uh, the Python code onto Raspberry Pi so it can drive, it can ping the Dropbox and then, and then drive, drive the Teensy. Um, perhaps that will be a different video, but that will be a much, a much more involved thing. But for right now, um, this is how uh, my students and students uh, at other schools who are using this, um, this is a little tutorial on how to get started. All right, thanks for watching.